my friends. Welcome back to my channel, Diamonds and Washi. My name is Katie, and if you're new here, hi, welcome. I hope you'll consider subscribing. And if you're back, of course, welcome back. Tonight, uh, I am hopping on just to do a little whip and chat with you guys. And if you're not familiar, uh, whip stands for work in progress, and chat means chat. So <laughs> feel free to pull out whatever it is you're working on or as I really couldn't help but say once, feel free to whip out your whip <laughs> and let's work along together. Um, I am working on a diamond painting. My husband is over there and his whip is editing, which I hear that I may be getting to try my hand at a little bit, hopefully in the near future. So that is fun. I can use some of my mad YouTube editing skills <laughs> and put them to good use. <laughs> Uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> so anyway, I am working on, this is one of my Josephine Wall Spirit of Flight canvases. Um, this is the diamond painting Deutschland version, um, which has 275 colors, square drills, and is 100 by 75 centimeters. Um, more on this project later. It's been a little while since I've gotten to this one. I actually don't remember if I've ever done a whip and chat with this particular kit before and it's been asked for so here we are <laughs> as far as what i'm using tonight apparently without even realizing it i was apparently feeling pink about just everything so we have and rose gold almost more specifically but like between the nails the socks the tray the pen the wee wax look even my tumbler that i'm using is rose gold right now <laughs> hmm water before we get started but even the pen that I used to write notes for tonight has like rose gold foil on it so what can I say <laughs> pink obsessed so this tray is from JH Envision Lab I actually haven't had the chance to try it out yet but um, I wanted to pick one up uh, along with the one I ordered for the giveaway that I actually still need to contact the winner um, from my week eight giveaway from summer with the masters and JH Envision Lab partnered with our event and has a discount code and everything so definitely go and check them out i'm also using for the first time look my lava pen from pen pal dp pen pal diamond painting pen pal <laughs> i apologize in advance for how um mesmerizing this is and if i get distracted from diamond painting just to watch this go <laughs> and it's in rose gold and it's a chubby thickness I think chubby that's that's adorable and I kind of forgot that I had a t <laughs> I don't know why I stuck a oh I know why for some reason I know not for some reason I just said I know why okay so this is an everlasting two placer in place of a single tip because when I went to put the single tip in that they included and I tried to push it in it didn't want to go in so I pushed harder don't say it and I just Hulk smashed it into oblivion and just snapped the tip off it's fine it's fine so I just apparently threw a two placer in there instead so I guess we're using that as a single placer tonight why not we wax in a rose gold tin and this is watermelon lemonade have I tried this one yet I don't remember if I have. I'm about to find out. Nope. It smells so good. I'm so excited. Okay, so we wax and then, yes. So let's get started. Let me pull back a section and let's start catching up. So I did have this like pre-cut, this column was pre-cut and then I just count one, two, three, four, five. Five squares down. Looks like we're gonna have lots of blues and greens. Do you see that confetti? <laughs> oh my gosh. It's fine. It's fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> okay, so I don't, I can't even use the wee wax tonight because I put, okay, well, it's just gonna be there to smell beautiful for us. Little scatterbrain tonight, but that is nothing new. So, how are you guys doing tonight? I hope you're doing very, very well and that you had a lovely weekend. Oops. Okay, this came with a stopper and I don't have it over here because I didn't think I needed it. Just, it's fine. Anyway, how are you guys doing? I hope you, you had a really fantastic weekend. 
I know we had a really fun weekend with family in town. Um, I'll share a little more about that in a bit, but this Josephine wall project, oh my gosh, it feels good to be back at it in a lot of ways. I kind of just needed a little sanity break from it for a while. Um, I, I didn't get like full on burnout, but I felt it. <laughs> I felt like if I kept going that I was going to hit burnout. So I thought I'm going to take the hint and take a little break from this one. Um, so it's been a couple weeks, but I've been working on it on and off the past few days, like in the past week, I suppose. And this is the second to last section of the fourth column. And I don't think I explained this project in this video <laughs> all over the place, as I said. So, um, I am working on the piece Spirit of Flight from Josephine Wall, and it's been licensed by two different diamond painting companies, Diamond Art Club and Diamond Painting Deutschland. And uh, I just, as I've said <laughs> quite often, I can't resist a comparison video to save my life. So I thought, why not work on two really ridiculously large canvases and do some comparisons along the way and share them with all of you. And we can kind of just see what the different um, strengths and styles of these two different companies are. So, I divided each of the canvases into eight columns total. So even though their dimensions are slightly different, um, it'll it's still eight columns total. And I'm doing a comparison video once I complete the you know respective columns in each kit. So I actually just filmed the comparison between the third column in each kit, and here I am just a couple of sections away from completing the fourth column. And if you math, um, once I finish this column in both kits, I'm gonna be halfway done with this project. <laughs> that is super exciting. And I, I don't know how long it's gonna take me. I'm not rushing it. I just am trying to enjoy the process. And when I get bored or burnt out or what have you, I just, I take a little break. <clears throat> Come back to it when I'm feeling it but it's a big project but I'm itching it'd be cool if I could get it done by the end of the summer but you know I'm I'd rather prioritize family time we have a Disney World trip coming up and no I'm not <laughs> taking any time in paintings to Disney World <laughs> that would be silly but and so, so certainly not this one but um that is okay I have a a large wall space in the hallway leading to our downstairs bathroom that is where I hang this when I'm not working on it. I don't have a designated craft space. I've mentioned that before. Uh, so I just craft at my kitchen table and I suppose, okay, maybe I do sort of have a designated craft space and I need to use it more, but I cannot use it on projects of this magnitude. Um, I do have my little, my desk nook over there but it's a small desk and so I when I'm working on this piece I really like to have it out laid out flat so that I don't cause any issues with the uh, adhesive bubbling or what have you so anyway yeah this gets hung up on like a heavy duty command hook in the hallway <laughs> but no I'm I'm really enjoying it it's it's nice to be back to it I didn't want to force my myself to work on it when I wasn't enjoying it but it's squares, it's so confetti heavy. I feel like you really have to be in the mood to work on um, something like this. But anyway, um, what did you guys think of the Diamond Art Club new releases this past weekend? Oh my gosh, I, I loved the, what's it called? Was it Warm Witch? It was the one with the witch. She really kind of gave me Hermione vibes. Um, and she was a round kit and the size was nice. So I'm super tempted by that one for Halloween, like to work on that one for Halloween. Um, it's so cute and the rendering looks really nice as well. And then I saw the, 
um, the new Jasmine Beckett Griffith, the Clockwork Dragon Lang one. That is one of the first Jasmine Beckett Griffiths in a long time that has really caught my eye. Um, I love the steampunk vibe to it. And when I saw Miss Coffee unbox it, I was like, ooh. Initially, I was worried about all of the like doll colors in the background, but it's all color blocking. And it's also a round drill kit. So I'm like, that would go so fast. And it has a dragon. Like, <laughs> of course, if it's got dragons, it's calling my name. Um, speaking of, Josephine Wall, Spirit of Flight, where are the dragons? Dragons fly too. <laughs> Um, are any of you waiting on your craftably pre-orders to come in? Can I just talk for a second about how craftably knows how to do customer service? Like, I am super, super impressed with how consistently they are posting updates and keeping everyone in the loop over on Instagram. And I feel like that's one of the things that can really set a business apart is their customer service and their communication because here's the thing if if a company runs behind with processing pre-orders and getting stuff out stuff happens they had some major shipping delays thanks to customs and whatnot um it's people are going to be remarkably understanding if you just communicate with them and tell them what's going on and i feel like at least on my Instagram feed, I don't think I've seen a single person complaining about Craftably and being like, where is my pre-order? Like, what is happening? Why, what's going on? <laughs> Why don't I have my pre-order yet? Um, because they've been so super communicative. So really mad <laughs> props to Craftably. I think that that can only help. And that just makes people feel like more confident and more comfortable and like, okay, it's fine. I'm going to get my pre-order soon. And they're working hard and they know that, you know, people are excited and waiting uh, for those to come in. So yay. Props to you craftively. Um, what else is going on? And as I'm like kind of recapping what other companies are doing. Um, I think that the word's kind of gone around at this point, but has anyone checked out the new shop on the block? <laughs> uh, Oraloa, I believe is the name. And I believe that they're located in France, but oh my goodness. So obviously licensed artwork, otherwise I wouldn't be talking about them, but I love some of the artists that they have signed. Laura P. I don't remember exactly what her last name is, but oh my gosh, her art is so soft and dreamy and I love it. I love it. So I'm super curious to see what their quality is like. I think that a lot of their stuff is basically on pre-order, um, which is an interesting way to launch, but you know, we'll see. But I'm seeing lots of people talking about them and, um, you know me, I'm all about like, yes, more companies that offer licensed diamond paintings. And speaking of licensing, if you haven't had the chance yet, please go and check out the video that Jessica at Tiny Worlds of Wonder put up this past weekend. Oh my gosh, so good. <laughs> she put up a video that was all about the nine, like, it was about nine common myths about licensing and diamond painting. And she explained why those are in, all incorrect. And um, I feel like when you're talking about a super hot button topic like licensing, um, it's, it's one of those things that I think can set people on edge really quickly and feel like their morals are being, and their integrity is being questioned. And um, I think that Jessica tried to be really sensitive and do a good job of not making it about that and just making it strictly informational. Um, I know, I feel like I learned some new things and some of the things that I already knew are things that 
I learned from her when we were planning our old master's event, things like that um, just because something is a stock photo doesn't mean that you can just use that image for free. Like you have to purchase licensing or some kind of reproduction rights from where, wherever the um, stock photo, you know, website or whatever it is or company is. So it's, it's stuff like that and it's just good things to keep in mind. And if, if you're wanting to do like, like many of us are to do right by the artists and um, to encourage more shops to launch with licensed diamond paintings and whatnot, I feel like more information is always a good thing. So uh, I will try to remember to link to her video down in the description, but I think it's definitely worth a look. And if you know that one of these or m multiple of these are myths that you personally believed, like it is, it's okay when you know better, you do better. And you know, you can just, you can make a change at any time. <laughs> you know, you can decide that, okay, going forward, I will no longer you know, assume that if I can't find artwork on a reverse image search, that that means it's unlicensed and I'm okay to use it. You know, you just, you take that information and you change your, your shopping habits. So good stuff over there. Um, as always, I mean, Jessica always has great diamond painting content. Um, <laughs> other things that are going. Okay, so I haven't gone live in a little while. Life has just been really busy and I just, that kind of has gone on the back burner for me, but I like the idea of trying to go live again soon. Maybe later this week, we'll see, but uh, keep your eyes peeled. Um, I think it would be nice to get, you, get to catch up with some of you guys that way again. I'm not sure, I don't think I'll try to do a Tuesday night. That's that's too soon unless I, I save it for next week. But uh, alternatively, you know, maybe on the weekend, we'll see. I'm gonna, even though my husband's sitting right here and I could be like, hey, what would work? I'm not gonna like put my calendar planning on a video for you guys. But I did pick up a planner and I've been trying to actually use it fairly regularly. And um, though I haven't filled it out for this, week but it's fine I'm not doing any fancy decorating aside from like the occasional like oh I'm gonna put some washi tape here just like a strip of washi tape to like spruce it up a little bit um but I am trying to use it in particular for uh tracking my to-do lists and let me tell you this past week I got stuff done like I made a bunch of phone calls that, well, to be fair, I haven't really had the spoons to make in a while, but I, you know, there were some that were really important and I was like, I really need to get these taken care of. And I just, I was able to, to get it done this past week. So things like the kids have their well visit scheduled. I have a, an appointment with my primary doctor scheduled to talk about a few different things and get a couple of referrals. And um, I called the speech therapist, like the speech therapy group that we've used in the past with our kids and we've been really happy with. And I called them to set up an uh, evaluation for Micah for, because we, we decided, okay, we really think he could benefit a lot from private speech in addition to what he's getting in school. And so I called and said, hi, you know, I'm calling to see if I could set up an eval for my son Micah. And, and she said, okay, well, um, we'll actually need an authorization from your pediatrician and then we can schedule you. Oh, and just FYI, the soonest we're, we're able to schedule is like three months out. And I was like, oh, really? And she was like, yeah, we're crazy, crazy backlogged right now. And like speech therapy centers, like all over our really backlogged right now that was the that was the case with scheduling even just the kids well visits there is they were like well september is the soonest available and i was like that's fine um i think people are sort of like playing catch up 
on all the stuff that they put on hold during the pandemic. And it seems like, you know, as a result, lots of doctor's offices and uh, places that provide services and whatnot are super backlogged. So I don't know if that'll be the case where you live, but definitely if you have something like pressing that you need to make an appointment for or something like that, um, I, just, I guess I'd keep that in mind just in case. Um, I guess I think it's going to be, I'm not going to get in, too into it because like this is not a space that I want to get like heavy, but at the moment, um, I think it's, we're going to be seeing the long-term effects of the COVID and the lockdown, um, the long-term lockdown for a long time, for a long time because it's just impacted so much. But anyway, I still was really proud of myself that I was able to like that I made those phone calls finally. And um, though, <laughs> let's talk about how discouraging it can be when like just a single thing changes to make something like this more difficult. So I went to just send a message to my kid's uh, pediatrician just to be like, hey, can you, you know, submit a referral for speech? Um, so we can get that ball rolling and come to find out like they had just completely changed over like the whole patient portal system and I couldn't it, it just was so complicated and long story short I couldn't like I can't get access to my kids profiles anymore unless I like call their customer. It's a whole thing and I thought oh my gosh I only have the spoons to send the email like I don't have the energy to like chase all of this down right now like I will just try to call the pediatrician's office during the week and just ask over the phone <laughs> but uh, man just the littlest stuff can kind of throw you but that's okay we'll get it we'll get it we'll get it rocking and rolling the kids are enjoying summer school and um so that's been fun we have family in town Adam's parents are here and the kids are loving it and it is hysterical how polar opposite our children are because one of them like wants absolutely nothing to do with the beach. He doesn't like the sand, the way the sand feels. He just, you know, the waves are super loud. He's not into it. I'm like, that's okay. Like you're your mother's child, <laughs> Connor. And then our other child, literally just dumping sand on his own head. <laughs> I actually didn't get to witness this, but I've been shown video <laughs> and photos from Adam and his parents. Like Micah was having the best time. And apparently something about the waves crashing, like, just gave him the giggles like they couldn't they don't know exactly what it was but like he would sometimes just stare at the water and just giggle when the waves would come in so yeah it's fun to have two completely polar opposite children <laughs> but i tease and, and joke with that i'm like well you know you you're more of a beach guy than i am so you can take the beach child and then i'll just hang with the the one that <laughs> that doesn't like the sand um yeah, I joke that I'm like, I don't know if I'm a real Californian because I don't love the beach. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's all right. Uh, we've gotten to go out a couple of times while Adam's parents watch the kiddos. Adam and I got to go out to dinner um, and we tried out a Mexican place. I was like, where did we go? We went to a Mexican place that we hadn't gotten to try out before and okay <laughs> let me talk for a minute about how like m what i consider to be spicy is vastly different from what regular consumers of mexican food <laughs> deem to be spicy i'm like yeah the mild salsa that you get in the jar from like what's the brand tostinos from the grocery store like that's spicy <laughs> So I think that like everything that they served at this restaurant like had a certain level of spice and I thought my mouth was on fire <laughs> and it like 
it wouldn't have had anything that I would have imagined to be spicy in the uh, description. So I jokingly will say like, okay, I'm super white girl here. Like, is it white girl spicy? <laughs> um, so, but no, it was so delicious. It was like, oh my gosh, this is so spicy. My mouth is on fire and I'm gonna die. But also this is so good. I can't stop eating it. <laughs> it was really, really good. So that was fun. And then we um, went out with uh, Adam's cousin came into town um, and we went out with uh, her and her SO, her significant other last night. And that was fun. Um, we ran into just completely randomly saw in person some really good friends of ours that we haven't seen in person we were trying to figure out, have we seen them in person once since the pandemic started? Um, anyway, it was so fun to see them and we you know, played catch up with them for a little bit and um, talked about trying to get a date on the calendar for our small group to get together in person, which like I'm dying to do. <laughs> uh, and so I, I told my friend, I was like, look, I don't know that I really have the space to host but maybe like you have tons of space maybe we could host at your place but like I can help a lot with the food or something like that so that we're sort of dividing up the responsibilities and then it's not like too overwhelming for any one person so um yeah our kids I'm sure would really love to see each other too yeah it was fun to see see them and to you know be able to go out and just enjoy out for a bit um I have oh my gosh well I, I was gonna talk about the beach again because I just glanced over at my notes and I was like beach vlogs so a uh, small plug I I have been vlogging at the beach a little bit when we've been down there and um, that'll be going into my patreon vlog and like I said just a really small plug here that I do have a patreon and if you're not familiar with what that is, it's a service that kind of functions like a subscription where you can offer monthly support to your favorite creators or artists or what have you. And there's no obligation whatsoever to be a part of this. But if you like the idea of seeing a little bit more behind the scenes, um, seeing a little bit more of what's going on in my personal life and having even a bit of say in uh, what I, what kind of content I'm bringing to my channel and whatnot. I'm trying to offer lots of really fun perks and whatnot over there. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, I encourage you to check it out. And also please don't sign up unless it's towards the beginning of the month because of the way that uh, Patreon charging works. So anyway, it's linked in the description if you want to check that out. But like I said, there's never any expectation or obligation or anything like that, but it's fun. I enjoy vlogging and sharing over there. Um, other, <laughs> oh my gosh, other ways that my children are keeping me on my toes. So, um, last night I had probably just fallen asleep and woke up maybe 45 minutes later to the sound of a door, one of my kids' doors opening. And I naturally assumed it was Connor and thought like, oh, we had a night terror. So I like hop out of bed and go to like intercept. And I'm like, oh, that's Micah. Now, here's why this was so shocking. Micah is still sleeping in a crib and, because he's always been very happy there. And I'm like, why fix it if it ain't broke? <laughs> and uh, I also have a doorknob cover on the inside of his room with the idea that if he ever did climb out of his crib, that would keep him contained. Um, No. Micah apparently discovered how not only to climb out of his crib, but also how to Hulk smash his way past the doorknob cover. It was It's a really cheap doorknob cover. <laughs> Let's just let's just say that but then he proceeded to do that again like an hour later and um i it like threw me back to the newborn days in the absolute worst way and 
What I mean by that is just this sense of like, I, I am incredibly disoriented whenever I am woken up in the middle of the night, unless I just so happen to be woken up in the perfect time in my sleep schedule. And so I'm usually just like stumbling like a, <laughs> like a person that's, you know, slightly intoxicated and just trying to like, okay, what do I need to do? <laughs> Wake up, Katie. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So suffice it to say we ordered the toddler crib conversion kit, which is just like a rail that we're going to put on the front of the, uh, of the crib like we take you take the front panel of the crib off and then this like just got guardrail attaches and then it's like well then if he gets out of bed then at least he can get back in <laughs> um and yeah we're gonna just we're adam and i are still brainstorming like okay what is the best way for us to handle this so fingers crossed i haven't heard him get out of his bed yet tonight but <sighs> I'd be lying if I said I wasn't gonna feel like I'm sleeping on edge tonight. So, yeah. <laughs> kids, kids. Connor never climbed out of his crib ever. We just put him in a toddler bed, like, when he really just, <laughs> it was silly for him to be in a crib anymore. But um, it wasn't because he climbed out of it. But Micah apparently decided he he's gonna start training for the Olympics and working on those working on those arm muscles <laughs> so um send prayers and good vibes because <laughs> this kid I'm telling you <laughs> oh my goodness um we are gonna let Connor play hooky from summer school one day this week so that he can go down and just spend a day with grandma and grandpa, which by the way, like the teachers actually for summer school slash extended school year, uh, the teachers actually are very upfront and say like family vacations and whatnot are very important. So please don't feel guilty about missing school for that kind of thing. There's not an attendance requirement for summer school or extended school year. Um, so I don't feel like I'm doing something shady. I'm like, no, like this is totally a legit reason to pull, to let him miss, you know? Um, I think that he'll, he'll have lots of fun getting some special grandma and grandpa time. Micah is too young to appreciate that sort of thing yet, but uh, someday, <laughs> someday he'll, he'll appreciate that. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, the kids are really enjoying summer school. I am trying to settle into sort of a rhythm again um and trying to make like good use of my time and there's some things I really want to work on this week uh with that I have some goals like I I'd like to start being more active and I feel like because historically this is a really difficult like thing for me to do don't worry I'm unpacking with my therapist like my <laughs> my weird relationship with food and like yo-yo dieting and diet culture and weight loss and like all of that and self-image issues like there's there's a lot to unpack and I'm glad I'm in therapy but um I do genuinely want to start becoming more active and my understanding is that I'm way more likely to have success with it if I am doing something that I enjoy and that I want to do and like Running is not that kind of thing for me. <laughs> I think because it's higher impact and when you're overweight, like high impact stuff is just painful. But I keep thinking I want to be an old lady and do like a swim aerobics class or something. And I started poking around a little bit. And you guys, they have swim Zumba classes. What? Okay, that might be right at my alley. So... I'm doing some digging and trying to see what my different options are and what will work like with my family's schedule and we'll go from there. I also think that like spin classes, like cycling would be fun because again, low impact. And I, I used to ride my bike all the time, like when I was a kid and when we lived in Ohio. <laughs> Ohio. I don't have a bike out here in California. Maybe I should add that to my someday list. But 
for now, like I would, I feel like I would enjoy a, a spin class. So I'm gonna start with like those two things to start with and hopefully it'll feel more manageable that way. And I, I don't want the goal to be weight loss because I don't wanna get totally wrapped up in that, but instead I want it to be like, okay, I'm just gonna focus on how I feel. How does my body feel? How do I feel? And am I enjoying this? Like, where's my mental health at with this? Am I in a good headspace with it all? And yeah, yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> but that's one of the things I want to try this week. And we're also trying to eat a bit healthier. And so I want to explore some, um, like, some more like recipes and that's I don't enjoy cooking like a single bit so that's also a little bit intimidating to me but um I do want to get some more healthy recipes in the rotation so uh, if you're so inclined if you have any like favorite lighter recipes you know things that have like grilled chicken or fish or something like that um, veggies, like if, if you have a favorite way that you like to prep veggies or something like that, feel free to share. Um, I always like seeing what other people enjoy too. <laughs> so yeah, I have, have those kinds of things on my sort of to-do list this week. I have some other phone calls to catch up on. And diamond painting wise, um, I finished Pride. And I initially thought that I might start up another round drill kit because it was so enjoyable to work on rounds. Um, but instead, like I found myself reaching for this Josephine, excuse me, this Josephine wall kit. So I thought, okay, well I'll keep kind of working on that. And I do have another kit going, but I've only done two sections on it and I don't think I've touched it in a month maybe and it's a kit that no it hasn't been a whole month but it's a kit that I am doing for the old masters event which is still going on it's a custom from crafties and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it I just um I don't know I just don't I don't reach for it <laughs> and I think I keep thinking oh I want to stretch it out and you know save it for as much of the old masters event as I can and and what have you but Instead, I've just finished two sections on it and it's just sitting over there neglected. I I do want to work on, I'll probably will add another round kit in here at some point. My guess is that I'll finish the fourth column on each of these Josephine walls and then take a little breather from them again, maybe. And maybe then I'll pull out a round drill kit. We'll see. But speaking of diamond painting, I thought that I would, I've been meaning to do this and I keep forgetting. Um, Dazzle Driller over on Instagram put together a mid-year diamond painting tag. And I thought I might go ahead and answer that tag here. And she had said like, oh, you can do it on Instagram or YouTube. And I thought, well, I'll just incorporate it into my whipping chat because this had been on the back of my, um, in the back of my mind actually to think like, do I want to do any kind of like mid-year, like here's all the diamond paintings I've completed this year sort of video. Um, and I just have a lot on my plate right now. I don't know if I could pull that together. So when I saw that she had done a tag, I was like, oh, that's a, that's a good way to sort of uh, touch base on what the first half of the year has looked like for me diamond painting wise. So she has a set of questions. I will try to remember to link to the Instagram post that she put up with the graphic, with the questions and whatnot. Um, I need some more lava goodness. Um, <laughs> I'll try to remember to link to that in the description below, but there were just a few questions that I'll respond to now. So how many diamond paintings have you completed in the year so far, which if you want, feel free to answer these yourself as we go along. You can um, leave it in the comments if you want. And yeah, feel free to answer as we go along if you want. Okay, so how many diamond paintings have you completed so far this year? If I am only going up to the end of June, if that's the cutoff, then I've completed 19. 
of a huge variety of sizes. Some of those were snack size, some of those were enormous. <laughs> if you are counting all the way up until when I'm filming this video, which is July 11th, I did finish Pride just a couple of days ago, and so that would actually put me at 20 kits so far this year, which I, in my um, year in review video for the year 2020, I completed 24 kits that whole year, but to be fair, I only started diamond painting like on what, April 1st? not April Fool's, <laughs> uh, and I didn't start multi-placing until partway through the summer. So I am so curious to see how many kits I complete this year. And you know, I almost feel like I want to someday when I'm bored, cause that is ever going to happen. I feel like I almost wanna go through and calculate the number of drills per painting because, is that the wrong color? I think I just put, I think that was a wrong drill mixed in there. Um, yeah, I kind of want to go through, I just completely lost my train of thought. Oh, and calculate the number of drills in each painting. I think that would be a really fascinating way to look at it. Because if someone says like, I said, oh, I've completed 20 diamond paintings so far this year. Like, if that's, there's a huge difference between saying like, I completed 20 snack size diamond paintings this year and like I completed 20, 50 by seven, <laughs> 70 uh, diamond painting kits this year or something like that. Um, I had a really healthy mix of both. So I don't know. I just thought like, oh, it'd be cool to calculate how many actual drills that is. <laughs> I'm weird. <laughs> what can I say? Okay, what's the, speaking of size, what, question number two, what is the biggest diamond painting that you have completed so far this year? Initially, I thought this was going to be the first Josephine Wall kit that I've ever completed, which was Magical Merry-Go-Round from Diamond Painting Deutschland, and it's 100 by 75 centimeters, same size as this guy, but I thought, well, let me do the math. And as I was doing the math, I was like, oh, actually, in sheer number of drills, uh, the Diamond Art Club and Randall Spangler kit, Firefly Fireworks has it beat uh, by like a thousand square centimeters because <laughs> uh, it was super tall. It was 170 centimeters by 51. But it's, I feel like it's almost not fair to like, call that one my like largest diamond painting completed because there was so much color blocking, especially like in the top half, it went so fast. And I'm pretty sure it was a round drill kit. Like I think that kit took me 11 days to complete. And like the Josephine Wall took me like three months, you know, after taking into account like a month long break I took in there. So I'm like, is it really fair to say that like the biggest kit that I completed is was a round drill that only took me a week and a half to complete versus this like other monster project. Um, anyway, but yeah, that was the biggest. The smallest that I worked on was Red Fox from the artist Gwen Seamel. And uh, it's the first kit that I worked on from a relatively new diamond painting company called True Artist Diamond Painting. And I was really, really, really happy with the quality of that kit. It was so crazy confetti heavy that it took quite a long time, I think, for a 40 by 40 centimeter kit. But yeah, that was the smallest. And then the next question is, what has been your favorite diamond painting completed so far? I had to think about this one for a little bit. And I still am not 100% sure, but I think I would have to say the piece Library version B, and that's from the artist Cheriyuki and from the company Die Moon Shop. It was a rather large piece, but it was so dreamy and whimsical and sweet. And even though it had so many muted tones, it was just 
I loved working on that piece. It felt like every little bit that I worked on revealed more details. And Cherry Yuki is one of my absolute favorite artists. And that was just a joy, a joy <laughs> to work on. And I mean, I think you can probably hear it in my voice. I'm like, oh yeah, I loved working on that kit. So I think I would say that's my favorite completed so far. Now, I like how she didn't say your least favorite. She said, your, what's your most disappointing kit that you've completed so far this year? And this is a tough one because I looked at my list and I was like, you know, if it were for the year 2020, I can actually pick out a couple of kits that I could answer that question with. But looking just at the kit, kits I've completed this year, none have been major disappointments. So where I landed, and take this with a big, big, big grain of salt, um, I landed on, I think, my most disappointing kit for the year so far completed. It's unfortunately my custom of Miranda the Tempest. And if you happen to watch my post review that I put up on Saturday for that exact piece, then you will see why that that's the one that I've picked and I want to be super super clear <clears throat> it is in no way shape or form the fault of the shop uniquely yours down under I had a really fabulous experience with from start to finish the quality was fantastic I think they did a really really nice job with the rendering of this artwork but I, I won't go into all the details because again I, I go over it at length in that post review um and i'll link that below if you're interested uh, but it just i think i was expecting to enjoy the process of working on that piece of art a lot more but i didn't enjoy it as much as i would have expected i think because there were so many grays and browns and lots of things like waves and rocks and the ground was like the grand grand majority of that of that piece and I think I just burned out on like I can't even tell what I'm working on but I love that artwork so much and it just I think I would have done better to just get a print of it and not to work on it as a diamond painting but I will count it as a learning experience and I would happily happily order a custom from Uniquely Yours down under again. Uh, they did, the Jennifer over there is so sweet and I think they did a really nice job. Okay, next question. What are you most looking forward to completing this year? And my answer for that one would have to be this Josephine Wall comparison project. This is like, this is like my <laughs> my sort of dream project in a lot of ways and I absolutely think I should have it done before the end of the year and I just think it's gonna be so incredible to compare these two. I am most excited of course for when I get to her face which I have saved that column for last. Um, I know that some of you are really not crazy about me deciding to do that, but I I had to, or I just was gonna lose all motivation after I finished that particular column. But we'll get there, we'll get there. <laughs> and part of what's gonna get us there is my excitement to see that, <laughs> that done and compare the two. I think the difference is going to be pretty stark. It already has been. But yeah, I'm hoping to have that Josephine Wall comparison video of the third column. My goal is to have that up sometime this week. I have not decided on what my schedule for the week is going to look like. I need to yawn apparently. Hmm. I just yawned like my kids do. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to chat with the hubby about what the week is going to look like for when we're going to see uh, his parents and what's going on with the kids and stuff. But 
I have a few different videos already recorded that I'll get to um, that I'll get to share with you guys soon. I'm also gonna have a really, really, really excited and excited. No, that it's exciting. <laughs> Uh, I lose, apparently I lose my words towards the end of the whip and chat, but I'm gonna have a really exciting announcement coming, hopefully very soon. I am just working out some of the final details with a friend on an annual diamond painting event <laughs> that will be happening again this year and that we'll be in love with. So uh, feel free to guess, but I don't know if <laughs> just stay tuned, stay tuned, announcement soon, building the anticipation. It'll be super fun. I'm stoked, stoked that that's coming. So other things coming this week, I decided to put together a little friend mail video because I've had some friends send me mail recently and it, again, that is never something that's ever expected, but I thought it would be fun to open that in its own video. So I will probably try to have that up this week as well. And yeah, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. And stay tuned, like I said, to see if I might be able to um, schedule a live here soon. Cause I, yeah, I think that would be fun to get to do with you guys again, so. I think I think that's all that I have for tonight, so I'll go ahead and wrap it up here. Um, if you made it all the way to the end, let's see. Uh, why don't you throw in an emoji that has pink in it somewhere? I'll make it easy for you. <laughs> An emoji that's pink in it somewhere because pink has apparently been the theme of tonight's whip and chat. <laughs> just look, just look at the lava effect. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I can't get over it. And uh, let me know what your answers were for the diamond painting tag that I shared. Like I said, I'll try to link to that post uh, on Instagram if you want to see the list of questions yourself. But yeah, leave those in the comments. That would be fun. Let me know what you've been working on as we've chatted this evening or whatever time of day it is for you. Let me know anything fun you have coming up this week or how your weekend was and just how you are in general. I hope I hope that you're doing well. I know it seems like a lot of people are really struggling mental health wise lately and just want to send all of my love and encouragement your way. I hope that if seeking out extra support through something like talk therapy is something that you want to do that you feel like you have the energy slash spoons to do so soon I know it's 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 tough but I believe in you <laughs> all right my friends um we got a little bit done tonight you got to see some of this come together <laughs> it's slowly but surely slowly but surely I think I got to place like three drills drills in a row at one point but um yeah I'll let you guys go. If you, uh, thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving a thumbs up before you go on about your day. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing and hanging out on my little corner of the internet over here. I would love to have you. And of course, leave all the things in the comments section below. All right, my friends, I hope you have a really, really wonderful week ahead. And I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.